Jan van Eyck was one of the most famous Flemish artists of the Northern Renaissance. He was born in 1390 in the county of Lune, and, in 1434, painted the Arnolfini double portrait. The painting is considered one of the most symbolic and intricate of its time. Today we're going to analyse it and look through all the conspiracies and controversies surrounding it as well. The painting was certainly used to show the wealth, piety, marital status and status of the artist. We'll explore those factors now. In the centre bottom of the painting is a small Brussels griffin. This is an expensive toy dog that wouldn't have been common in the era. They certainly put the dog at the foot of the painting to show that the couple had plenty of wealth and could afford not only to buy, but also to maintain pets such as these. If we look to the right of the painting, the woman herself is lifting up her gown. This gown is already made of a really, really rich green dye and an expensively folded and abundant cloth. But as she lifts it up, we see another bit of blue underneath, which also suggests that she has enough wealth to buy multiple layers of cloth. The blue underneath the green at her hem is actually a different shade of blue to her sleeves. So not only can she afford the green and the blue, but two specific types of blue. It's also important to note that the actual pigments used to paint the painting would have been expensive themselves. So not only is the cloth expensive, but so is the paint and the dye used for that. The woman's cloth also shows the fine tailor work that would have been employed in creating it. Specifically, around her cloth of blonde round her head, we see fine tailor work in the delicate lace. If we look to the left of the painting, we can also see further displays of wealth next to the man. Just below him, there are three oranges on the windowsill. Being able to acquire oranges in the 15th century would have showed an extreme amount of wealth, not only wealth, but social connections in order to be able to get those oranges. But something that people don't realise often is that it would have been a great expense to actually preserve those oranges and have them sitting by a window, by a hot window, long enough for them to still, still remain fresh for the painting. The open window also reveals something else about the couple's wealth. If we look at the window, there's a small cherry tree just de depicted in the sliver that we can see through the window. The fact that we can see the top of this tree shows that we must be on a second or even a third floor of the building. Therefore, the couple have enough wealth to buy multiple floors of a building or the entire building itself. Next, we can look at the issues surrounding the couple's piety and religious devotion in the portrait. So firstly, we can see a small rosary and a dust brush in the background of the painting. These denote aura et labora, um, which according to the Benedictine teachings, prophesied of prayer and work in order to keep the human soul safe and healthy and happy. We can also see around this delicately painted mirror, tiny icons depicting the passion of Christ when he was killed via crucifixion on the cross. These are obviously highly symbolic in Catholic tradition and show that the donors had a high degree of religious knowledge and wanted it to be centrally put into the painting. To the right, we can also see a saint in prayer upon the headboard. This appears to be St Margaret on top of her dragon. St Margaret was the patron saint of childbirth and, by extension, of marriage. This might indicate that the couple were both religious, but also wanted a blessed marriage. 
This is where some more interesting aspects of the portrait begin. Some call these conspiracies, some theories. On one hand, this could just be a simple portrait, a commission by a lovely couple to show the objective wealth and the piety, as we've discussed, of two Dutch people in the 15th century. In addition to the obvious decorative and memorial purposes of this as just a lovely piece of art. However, the painting invites us to question further into its real meaning. Firstly, it's important to look at the patron and the background. The male figure in the portrait is probably a Bruges merchant named Giovanni de Alfi Arnolfini and the woman, his wife. However, Giovanni's first wife, we know, died in 1433 after childbirth, and this portrait was officially painted in 1434. So maybe the painting was begun in 1433 and then his wife died. Or maybe the painting was completely finished after she had died and she was never alive to sit for it at all. Or maybe this painting is actually of an undocumented another wife. Maybe it's a wife that Giovanni never mentioned and was never mentioned in any later scripts. Adding to this theory is the idea that the wife that died in childbirth, Constanza Trenta, was an Italian woman, but the woman depicted in this painting looks remarkably Flemish. This could either be Van Eyck's reinterpretation of it, or maybe it is an entirely different woman. The first idea is that this is his first wife, Constanza Trenta, that she is dead and this is some sort of contemporary memorial painting to remember her life and honour her. We can see this through the elaborate detail which invites the viewer in for a closer, more symbolic reading. For example, if we look above the patrons, there's one lighted candle above the man and a husk, a burnt out candle above the woman. Maybe this suggests that while the man lives and his fire goes on, the woman has passed into a new life. Moreover, the woman's face is glowing and bright, almost ghostly. Yet, in theory, if we look at the angles of the painting, she should actually be standing in his shadow. Moreover, she's more internally inside the room and so should be in a darker light anyway. Maybe she's an ethereal, angelic ghost. She also appears more facially idealised than him. This was often tradition as women were painted as ideal objects and men painted more sincerely. However, she is really highly idealised with this, with a very white, pure complexion, a large forehead and plucked eyebrows. It's also important to look back at that little toy dog that we initially mentioned. In the 15th century, tomb statues, specifically of women, often had a little dog at the foot to show fidelity. Well, she's got a dog at her foot here, so maybe this is another allusion to her death. It's also important to note that St Margaret, the little wooden saint on the bed behind her, was not only a saint of childbirth, but also worked as an um, communicator between the earthly realm and the and the realm beyond heaven for passed on mothers and their offspring. Now we're on to theory two. This theory states that the woman is not dead or even if she is dead in real life in the painting she's not supposed to be dead. This theory suggests that maybe she is in fact pregnant. To a modern eye, the rounded belly and the lifted up fabric of the woman does suggest that she's pregnant. However, this was probably not the case at the time, as pregnant women, apart from possibly the Virgin Mary, were very rarely depicted. However, she may be pregnant because she does have a rounded stomach. This is undeniable and something that as a modern audience we definitely should investigate. We should also look at the symbolically red cloth on the bed behind them. Red, of course, is the colour of love and blood and thus passion. 
Beyond this, the man also stands near the outside world. He's to do with trade and merchantry, while she is internally placed in a more domestic realm, again alluding to her possible maternity. Maybe this then fits in with the theory that Constanza died in pregnancy. Thus, this painting is actually honouring her during her, her, her pregnancy, suggesting that she wasn't infertile and wasn't some sort of barren witch. The final theory that we're going to discuss is that actually this is a second wife, a wife that was never documented. Initially, this might seem strange, but was actually quite common practice at the time, and many spouses were never really recorded. She definitely doesn't look Italian, and whilst we don't have much documentation of Constanza Trenta, this probably wasn't really what she looked like. In fact, the woman here looks very Flemish. She's pale, she has light hair and a delicate touch. Maybe this painting itself is actually a marriage document, not just a celebration of marriage, but a document, a legally binding contract itself. Maybe if we look into the mirror at the back of the painting, which clearly shows the couple who are in the foreground and then the mirror displaying the painter and someone else behind, maybe this fourth person is actually an official who was there to officiate the marriage ceremony. The Arnolfini portrait has many, many mysteries, most of which will never be solved. But maybe that's what makes it such an astounding piece of art. The fact that for generations, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years after it was first painted, can go on wondering who these people were, what their lives were like, and how maybe we can understand them today, even removed by the years of history.